recorded September 13, 2023. Good afternoon, Henrik. Good afternoon, Andrea. Good afternoon, Brody. Good afternoon, Rod. What's up, people? What's up? How, how does Henry keep getting in here? We keep changing the password. He gets, he gotta so, leave. so it's it's new Brody and old Brody on the screen at the same time. I know, right? This this is sort of how you guys got here. Just showed up one day when leave. You know. Yeah, that, that a, is true. That was a Saturday Night Live <laughs> skit too. Uh, the, the they were they were making mockeries of um, Bill Murray was there and all those guys, and they had an episode where they had the 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 thing that wouldn't leave and it was the in-laws and every time remember they that got one? you remember that one yeah. <laughs> i just dated myself andrew what you been doing all week oh hello i've been doing i'm gonna call it busy work um so i've been doing power bi dashboards i've been plotting out some strategy for the year so stuff that has to be done but stuff that's not all that much fun so i could i could take some hints from you because i'm having to do busy but it is necessary because you're not going to be able to who else is going to do it right you know so i'm powerpoint and writing some stuff and I'm msx and i i get it so but yeah that's it honestly that's it let's see i've been watching foundation uh, i'm gonna go see the new equalizer movie this weekend Excited equalizer about that. movie there's a new one there's a new one denzel equalizer three really yeah I heard it's yeah. I heard it's decent. Yeah, uh, yeah. Shelly and Chris went to see it last night. My sister and her husband they said it was good. So huh. Shelly loves anything where somebody gets punched. So. Will it be better than the Barbie movie though? That's the question. Totally different. I don't think you can rate them. But yeah, so, but the, I think it, you can. And the interesting yeah. thing on um, uh, I was listening to NPR and there is a a woman whose name is Bobber Oppenheimer. And it's so funny that she's gone into places and people are like, is that you? like, yeah, that's my name. And uh, that, that that was funny to listen to that on Sunday. Yeah, I'm going to check it out too. Uh, yeah, busy work. What about you, Brody? I've had a day. So. Already? Crack one. Yep, I've had a day. Oh, now it's beer all over my desk. All right, perfect. That's good. It is there so we go. Funny. Excellent. Yep, it's a day. I've got a spill I got to deal with now. Life's good. Yeah, life's excellent. Put that down there. Things are things are just dandy. Uh, security, busy. Hey, do you know what's something new that I learned all about managing uh, servers with the Defender for Endpoint Configuration Manager? It's pretty sure. cool. Have you guys worked on that yet? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Love it's it. a new modern way of doing it. I'll link. I'll post some links, but I'm just learning how to do it. Basically, the security team at this <clears> company that. Um, I'm working with. They don't want to have to go through the endpoint or the uh, the server team to make uh, configuration changes to ASR rules. They want to do their own thing in the security portal. So we showed them how, and we're still uh, yeah. working that out. Yeah, so send me, the link, cool. send me the links for that, and I'll put it in the show notes. Andrea, you've been working on that, though, right? Because you have a question. Yeah. Yeah, yeah a little go. bit, but. So there he is. <clears throat> I think I think old Brody must have put um, beer on his computer. It's so funny. The reason I was late, I was walking up the stairs and fell, and all the beer went all over the place. <laughs> this is a fun show, people. We're, we're serious around here. Uh, Henrik. Uh, welcome yes. back, by the way, Henrik. Uh, thank welcome. you. Thank you. I mean, new Brody. Thanks yeah. for having me. Uh, yes, anytime. new Brody. That's right. Uh, yeah, what I have been doing, I have actually been looking in the connectors. Uh, Sentinel made the switch from the old yeah. legacy data connectors, right? And moved it to the content hub. Yeah. I've been looking into that because we're implementing it in new tenants at the moment. So we have to find XDR platform, the, yeah, the security.microsoft stuff together with the Sentinel. And I know our guest loves that part, the mm -hmm. Sentinel part of this. So yeah, that's what I do at the did moment. You, did you have the pleasure that when I did the update, it it popped up and said either workbook of solution migration in progress wait and it transferred all my stuff over and i watched it and then the workbooks looked different and the data connector started to, to look different too but everything's in the content i got to get back in there my lab is just messed up these days i need to clean it up i am it, not a fan of the new content hub fyi no, it is 
it is it is flaky. It is convoluted because you, it's you, early days. Yeah, yeah. You, you shoot a random parallel, don't flip them. Uh, I don't know. It is what it is, right? It works Ooh. though, so it works. <clears throat> yeah, it kind of works. Uh, I'll be quiet. <laughs> Last and most least, right? Oh, uh, what have I been doing? Oh, everything, everything. You know, in my world is about either AI or. Microsoft Ignite, and I should note to everyone listening right now, get registered early, get registered quickly. This thing will sell out, I promise you. And I also promise that the pre-day and the sessions are going to be super valuable this year. Labs, I am working. I was just doing this right before the show, and hopefully I'll have this to put in the show notes, or we'll talk about it next time. A Microsoft Security Insights show discount link uh discount code for registration very cool yeah i take it you're going to be on site in person oh yeah yeah this is with uh travel budget restrictions at microsoft this is the only thing that i have been approved for this year and that's early october right excuse me for not knowing uh, november sorry second week in november yeah but I I'll may, be there for like I, let's talk offline i may have a smidgen of TNE to come up to pay for part of it. I'll, I'll... Oh, that'd be great. Well, we could do the show from there. We'll find a little spot and introduce some people, bring some we'll, guests in from Redmond. We'll talk about it. Yeah. I, I thought it was like mid October, and you know what I got going on here in Atlanta. I can't get out. I think um, our guest is uh, taking selfies. She, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk. We'll talk. We'll, we'll, she doesn't know we can see her. I was, I was well, let's get her in here. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. it. Well, let's get our guest in here. Right. Bring her in. All right. So, this guest, uh, I'm going to introduce here, and I'm going to allow her to introduce herself here in just a second. But we, a couple weeks ago, we had some comments. We were talking about Black Hat and DEF CON, talking about upcoming conferences. One of our audience members was like, hey, you know, what's this value of Black Hat? If Microsoft's going to be investing time here, why should I go? And who I thought, you know, who better than Sarah, who just came back from Black Hat and DEF CON and all the good summer camp stuff to be able to, to talk to that. I know she's already done. I've seen it. I know she's already done an actual trip report, but we'll just call this the visual trip report, if we will. Sarah, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, hello. Yes, I was taking selfies. I wanted to get a cool picture of me looking half decent with my lights behind me for no particular reason. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I wanted to see if I could get, yeah, like this. I was I was like trying to go, yeah, I know. I was going to like try and make myself look attractive and then I realized it doesn't look attractive. Oh, like, you look great, Sarah. Come on. Come I, this on. Is, yeah. it is, um, it is, for those of you who don't know, I live in Australia. It is, in fact, 10 past seven in the morning tomorrow. So uh, so that's why I was like, oh, look, can I make myself look decent at this time in the morning? Um, I wanted to like flex on my Instagram and tell people that I had got myself up to do work at 7 a.m. So, uh, um, but yes, I, I lo- like, yes, you can all look at me um, being, uh, doing selfies. I was like, I do know you can do it. And then I realized, and then I kind of forgot and then spent too long on the selfies. And then I was like, you're totally going to laugh at me. Anyway, hello. Um, well, you can't, uh, you, you, you can't let those moments go. When you're looking like, really good, you have some, to, yeah. At least I wasn't doing duck faces and like, I could do it. Well, I really just wanted my lights in and I couldn't get my, I couldn't get my lights in properly. Anyway, I need to change up how my office is. Anyway. Change the whole um, thing right now. Change I'll it. tell you hello, what's better hello. than a selfie. I'll just take a picture of you right now. The, Keep going. Just keep talking. Yeah, I'll do it. Um, yeah. There you go. Yeah, we can do. We can do some. Um, anyway, um, yes. Um, I promise, I'm actually not a selfie person that much. I just decided I wanted to see if I could make myself look nice on for sure. my Instagram. Uh, sure, anyway, sure. yeah, I swear I don't. Um, mm-hmm. uh, anyway, but now I'm gonna have to post one on Twitter because I've been <laughs> just. Put yeah, people are listening. They're they're yeah. they're. Anyway. Waiting. Um, so my name is Sarah Young. Uh, I'm Rod's teammate. Uh, so I am on the same team as Rod. Um, so I am a cl- 
cloud security advocate. Uh, I've been kicking around Microsoft for about five years now. Uh, I've done a couple of other roles, all security. Uh, I'm based in Australia. Um, anyone who has like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, uh, anyone who has uh, sort of followed me, I have moved countries a fair old bit as well in the last few years. Um, though I am, uh, I have been in the US and New Zealand and Australia, uh, but now I am in Australia hopefully for good, but we'll see. We ne we'll never say never on that one. Um, and yeah, um, I did go to Def Black Hat and DEF CON. Well, I went to that whole week, um, which is called Hacker Summer Camp. N nice, Brody, nice. Um, um, it, uh, uh, it was, uh, uh, yeah, it's cool. It's always in the middle of August. It goes on for a long time. It's not just Black Hat and DEF CON. It's actually about five conferences. Um, all next to each other, like back to back. And uh, it's pretty intense week if you do the whole thing. Uh, not everybody, not everybody does. Um, uh, unfortunately, when you're coming as far as I am for uh, Hacker Summer Camp, I would definitely um, be there for the whole week um, because it's a good, uh, it's a good 20 hour trip for me to come over to Vegas. Um, but yeah, um, that's question. kind of, yeah. what. What do people want to know, Rod? Or, well, I mean, what first off, I think one of the obvious questions, what's the difference between all these Black Hat, DEF CON, the summer camps, okay. different audiences, different approach? Is it? Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, the whole week is kind of fondly, kind of quite fondly known as Hacker Summer Camp, uh, mm -hmm. which... Mm. Um, uh, because it's, well, in the middle of the summer in Vegas, uh, which is far too hot for, for my liking, uh, far, far too hot to be in the desert in the summer. Um, your shoes. Uh, yeah. Um, so um, the, the, the big, the, I don't want to say main because that's disparaging to the other events, um, but the, 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 the big conferences, the biggest ones are Black Hat and DEF CON, and they do not overlap. At the beginning of the week, you have Black Hat, and at the end of the week, you have DEF CON, and that stays the same every year. So Black Hat is, um, it's been going for like 25 years now. In fact, DEF CON started first. DEF CON's been going for about 30 years. Um, DEF CON is like a hacker. Um, so DEF CON is a hacker conference. It is more, it, it kind of like, they're kind of foils to each other for, for one of a better word. Um, DEF CON has always been very alternative. It's a big event, though. It's still very big. Um, and um, it's very, very technical. You're not going to hear people talk about thought leadership and CISO stuff and leadership. Like, it'll be, hey, I did this cool hardware hack or blah, 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 blah. It's much more technical and hands-on. So um, it's also less corporate. Like, you don't have an expo hall. There's not, like, lots. They do have sponsors, but there's no expo hall where vendors can sort of give out swag and sell their wares and blah blah whereas black hat um and i have spoken at black hat in asia because black hat has a few iterations but the big one is in the us a black hat is a research focused conference um it looks for research based uh, submissions uh so if um it, it's quite different to other conferences that you might have been to um that i i am very fortunate that i know some of the people on the black hat review board um they do very specifically look for original pieces of work um whether that's it doesn't necessarily have to be super super technical but it has to be research based um but black hat also has an expo hall they also do training before the conference and it's huge it's massive um so they're the two big ones and then you have b-size las vegas which runs sort of the middle mm -hmm. of the week um b-size las vegas um is the original b-sides so if you're not familiar with b-sides um if anybody isn't who's listening um b-sides started because uh, there were so many submissions to both Black Hat and DEF CON, and they can't accept it, all of them. Even if it's a great submission, they just don't have enough spot. And B-Side started as like a little independent thing, and the name comes from being the B-Side of a tape. Uh, for everyone who's old enough to remember tapes. I remember uh, MC yeah, Hammer, Hammer Time, I first tape. Ago. And yep. uh, yeah, there you go. So for those of you who remember tapes, the B-Side um, 
of a tape. And um, so basically they would take in some of the talks that were submitted and they started a whole new conference called B-Sides Las Vegas. So that B-Sides Las Vegas is the original B-Sides. Uh, I'm sure plenty of people know that B-Sides has now gone around the world. Mm -hmm. I think there's about 800 B-Sides events uh -huh. throughout the world now. Um, B-Sides Las Vegas is still pretty small. I know they cap it. It's in Tuscany Suites. Um, and it's supposed to be like very inclusive. Um, the ticket price is low. It's a community event. It's not for profit. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much um, that one. Then there's two more because, yeah, um, there is um, uh, the Diana Initiative, which is a one day conference towards the beginning of the week, which was founded to uh, uh, promote um, and have a place for people who are like minorities in, in cybersecurity. So women, people of color, different races, um, but it's so big now, loads of people go to it. Um, it. And that's a lovely little conference. And then new for this year, cause I just to round it all off, there was also um, Black Girls Hack uh, made their own uh, event called Squad Con. So that was a new one this year. Mm -hmm. So it is an incredibly, busy week there's a lot going on there um, so but it does, it does cater to different audiences depending on what you're interested in most people if you're not insane like me don't try and attend every single event during the week because it will just kill you well you 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 gave your title when you first started but it sounds like a, you professional conference attendee <laughs> you're going to do that i am, right. I am but, a professional a conference attendee uh, it's the, true so let me ask you the, the $64.20 question. You weren't staying at MGM recently, were you? <laughs> uh. No, no, I was not staying at the MGM. Um, I actually did not stay in an MGM brand hotel. Um, so that has nothing to do with me. Um, I'm also like, let's face it, I am not probably a good, like the, the, the casinos, I mean, obviously it'll all come out in the wash what's happened there, but, or maybe not. Uh, but the casinos have pretty good security um, because of the nature of what they do. So I, I would like to think that, um, you know, it's been something reasonably complex that's gone on there. And it probably would be beyond uh, my level of hacking. But And it's yeah. still going on. Our, our boss, Sarah and I's boss, Joey, he lives in Vegas now. And apparently he drove... Yeah, to the strip and parked because obviously they're not charging for parking now because the meters are shut down. So wow. he was able to go in and kind of take advantage. Out. Oh, I could park everywhere. Here's a funny well, thing. Yeah. I first thing I would have done was take pictures everywhere, but he didn't even take pictures. Well, uh, well, but it, and I just saw on the, the the question, someone said, "Is there a B size near Leeds or Manchester?" I happen to know the answer to that question. Um, there is indeed a B-Size Leeds, um, which I spoke at in right. um, in June. So funny uh, for those Le Leeds, Manchester, their cities in the UK. I was actually born. I actually grew up near Leeds, and I have always wanted to go to a B-Size in the UK because I've never been to one. And I managed to get to B-Size Leeds. I think they were confused because they were like, "Why is this random lady from Australia like submitting to our B-Sides?" <laughs> and I got to go, and it was super exciting, and I was totally stoked about it. Um, and I don't know if there's one in Manchester, but there's definitely one in Lancashire. Um, again, for those who don't know the geography. Lancashire is the county that, um, man, well, is the county sort of right next to Manchester. So, mm. um, so, so with, with your role, just like Rod, when you go to these conferences, it's easy for me to put my head around a conference when it's sales oriented, right? Because I'm, I'm there and I'm, I'm, what are you promoting? Are you there to, you know, promoting. give out or are you? What what do you, what what do you pull out of these conferences? Because I've been to both, and you're right, DefCon. If I blindfold you and put you in there and you take it off, you have to figure out whether you're at Comic Con, a Dungeons and Dragons convention, or something else. Right? It's, it's actually pretty cool. But what do you get out of it when you go there? Is it connection making? You learn a new tech. It gives you ideas. You see how they're bashing Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> all kinds of things so i'm sure rod like 
Um, you know, exactly. I'm sure Rod's talked about, you know, what we do um, uh, before. I don't know um, what Rod does. Um, no, nobody yeah, knows what I do. He tells people uh, and blogs, and that's all he does. Yeah. Nobody yeah, knows. I mean, it's funny because, yeah. you know, sometimes I get people come up to me and they're like, oh, you're like an advocate, so you sell stuff. And I'm like, no, nah, I don't sell anything, actually. Um, I mean, um, or I don't, anyway, maybe. No. Um, so um, I don't know, Edward, if you knew I used to be a global black belt at GBB and I was a really bad GBB um which is why I'm not a GBB anymore well they're sales people uh, right aren't are GBBs are sales people right former GBB myself yeah I know and, 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 and you, yeah you're a GBB as well well I was a bad GBB when I was a GBB um so um because I'm really bad at selling so um but um essentially you tell the truth yeah it, it is it is the truth um yeah, like yeah, essentially yeah. um so advocates advocate to the community on behalf of Microsoft, and we advocate back into Microsoft on behalf of the community. We don't have sales targets. Um, of course, if someone comes up to me and is like, hey, Sarah, can you tell me about Microsoft Steam or blah, 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 do you have this? Of course, I will talk about it because I know about it. But when we go to these community events, uh, these conferences, uh, it also depends on the conference we're at what we'll be doing like so black hat something that's more commercial um i'll probably end up doing a bit of booth duty and talking to people about products because that's what people kind of expect us to do at that sort of conference if i went to a b-sides or a defcon um anybody there would just turn off if i talked about that sort of stuff normally at, at defcon i sit and i um i help at one of the villages defcon has multiple villages which are like conferences in themselves i've been involved in the cloud village for years so i often just go and help and you end up talking to people and making connections basically for me conferences um in fact this has always been the case but conferences are not about the talk so much more often than not the talks are put online and you can watch them later for me the important thing about going to events is just talking to people and what we call hallway con where you end up having random conversations with people and making connections but I, um, before I go to an event, um, usually if I've been to it before, then I kind of know what, what, what I'm aiming to do. If I haven't, I'll do some research, but you know, essentially, um, if it's a more community based conference, I'm not going to be selling. I will be taking feedback about, um, the, the community and taking it back to Microsoft. If people bash Microsoft and, and and say, hey, I've got this thing, it doesn't work, or hey, I've been going around in circles. I give them my card and I say, send me an email. I And no promises, but I will do my best, um, especially if you're getting in a loop with support and blah, blah, blah. I can try and get you an answer on something. Um, sometimes there's some things I can't, um, but I'm usually pretty good. Um, obviously that doesn't scale super well, but um, I think that's like a personal touch that um, is important. And also, you know, we advocate, Rod talked about Ignite, right? That's coming up in November. So we help Microsoft because um, we want community people to come to it and we want it to be meaningful and people to enjoy it. We'll also, uh, within Microsoft, talk to the teams and say, hey, this is the stuff people are interested in at the moment from a security perspective. We need to cover this off because this is the stuff people want to come and see. So that's the kind of stuff we do. But I spend a lot of time talking to people. I give out Tim Tams if I'm abroad. I give out stickers. Yes. Um, I just also think it's really important that um, I, the reason I am an advocate is because I used to do this on the side as like an extracurricular before I joined advocacy anyway, but so I would do this anyway, but I think it's important that we just show up as well. Like not even, it's not even about like going to these events and hard out selling or sneaky selling. It's just like, actually, Hey, Microsoft cares about the community. Um, that's important yeah. in my opinion. So, well, and I think so, there's one thing to highlight, sorry, Ed, real quick uh, about the Ignite and then we'll move on um, because there was a question. I'm going to pop it on the screen real quick. I, um, where did it go? That's not the actual question. Here's the question. So if I'm to choose between Black Hat, DEF CON and Ignite, oh. what should I pick? I think one of the things important to highlight is we're, just like Sarah said, we're working extremely hard to make Ignite a very real security event for our customers. So if you're in the... How would you put that, Sarah? If you're in the Microsoft space, yeah, definitely Ignite. I think, yeah, I think it depends. Um, I'm, I'm going to use everyone's favorite idea. It depends. Person. It depends. You so, it um, I yeah. mean, it depends what you do and what your interests are. Because I realize most people, you know, most if, if, you're, if you've got some training budget, you've kind of got a fixed little box and you have to decide what's most valuable. To me, um, that's a big if. If you are big into... Um, the Microsoft ecosystem and using security stuff, 
um and you want to and and your org or wherever you work is kind of using or going to adopt microsoft stuff then ignite makes loads of sense because there's going to be workshops we're going to have a ton of experts because part of advocacy um in fact a big thing that i'm big on i mean i will go and prance around on stage at a conference that's fine i do that all the time but uh, things like ignite we try and go and find all those other cool people in microsoft who you wouldn't normally get exposed to and bring them out because they're way smarter than me and i would rather put them on stage um so if you're you know if you're big into the microsoft ecosystem of course ignite makes sense if you want to sort of widen your security knowledge in general um or you want to learn you know you want to go then i would say black hat defcon hacker summer camp is the way to go um yeah um it's 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 difficult it depends do both if you've got the money but <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I'd like to come in on that. In my experience of going to all three, uh, Ignite as a, you know, FTE and then Ignite as, you know, a, a employee of a company that uses Microsoft. Main thing I, I learned when you go to, especially DEF CON, a lot of independent contributors that don't work for anybody. They're contractors. They're, they're, they, you know, folks that pen test, you know, for money, right? It's, it's, it's that type. When you come to Ignite, I find very few independent consultants that they're almost exclusively attached to a company that is using the product. But when you go to DEF CON, I mean, they are mercenaries for hire a lot of them, right? Not necessarily representing a company, they're just representing themselves. And Black Hat's like a mix. So you see a lot of people paying out of their pocket to go to DEF CON and Black Hat, yeah. right? Because it's not really sponsored that way. But when you go there... You, you meet some smart people, right? You and you see some wicked laptops. Like, what what type of laptop is that? What are you running on that? And, that, and that's pretty good. And then if you want to be, a, it used to be if you wanted to be a joke, just go there and open up your laptop and show Windows anything. And everybody look up and like, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's why Sarah went to Black Hat DEF CON and I'm going to Ignite because the smart people go to Black Hat DEF CON and. Oh, Rod, also. <laughs> You know I'm I, going to ignite too. So I don't know. Oh. you're you're going there to raise the IQ level. There you go. No, no, that's probably not it. Just probably the proportion of Tim. But I, but I, I, I but ignite gives away because every time I went, I won something. I won an Xbox or something. So let me give you guys a hidden trick. <laughs> and Rick, and Rick's like I've never won anything. Here, here, here's how you always win. You get a bunch of your cards. And when you go to the bowl, you take everybody else's cards out and you put yours in it. <laughs> <laughs> you take all their cards out, you dump it into your little swag bag. You take all your cards that you put in there. You're like, God, See, that's it the funny is... thing. I didn't think we had cards anymore. Sarah's like, just give me my card. I'm like, you still have cards? That's crazy. Oh, yeah, but you haven't seen my cards, though. Well, but show them. Bring a card up. my cards. Like, yeah, my bring them cards up and see the stuff. I don't know where the they plot? are. Um, I don't okay. know if I have them in the office. I have very pretty cards, which is the only okay. reason I give them out, because okay. they have very cute artwork of me and my dogs on, and they're very pretty. They're not the Microsoft cards. And the only reason I give them out is, A, because I want to show people I have pretty cards, and because that that's true. Um, and, yeah, because... Normal cards are boring. That's why I give people cards. And you're proud of your dogs. Yeah. And I'm very proud of my dogs. Yeah. So how do you figure out what to evangelize? What what drives your decision making on what is relevant, what is prevalent? Because it's so much. Is it really listening to the people and giving them what they want? Or listening to the people and giving them what you want? It's, it's a bit of both. So mm. we talk in, in our team, we talk to internal Microsoft people. We discover what their priorities are, what they think um, they want to tell people about. But we also go to, we, we listen to the community about what what they want or where they think that, you know, if we have a product and people don't understand it, if we hear that like that sort of feedback, they don't understand the story or there's something hot and new and I'm not going, we're not going there, Rod. AI, um, that's kind of top <laughs> of mind for everybody. Um, um, then we, we make sure that that's, we, we basically will tell people in Microsoft, this is what we need to talk about. And if we don't have content on it, this is what people are struggling with, or this is what people want to know about. So, but we also do listen to within Microsoft, 
you know, if there's something in particular they want to get the word out about, then we will try and help with that too. And I, I very deliberately use the phrase get the word out because we're not selling. We're just driving awareness. Um, and I think, um, and this is why I was a terrible GBB, to be honest with you, um, because I am all about kind of the 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 tech and 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 the cool stuff that we do, whether it's a person or whether it's a um, whether it's it's the actual product itself and and the the cool things that go on behind it, like just showing what we've got and it's speaking for itself rather than me just trying to push something. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the difference between advocacy and marketing and sales. Um, that we just showcase some cool stuff that Microsoft do. And a lot of the teams behind the scenes do some really cool stuff. And let's tell that story, show people what we do. And then if you think that's cool and it suits your, you know, what you need, go, go, go buy it. Um, but that's kind of the next stage. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm just really big on that. Like I said, that's why I wasn't a great GPP. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I, I get it. The advocacy is selling the present. And, you know, and the, and the selling piece is selling the future, <laughs> selling promises. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so there was, was, was opposed yeah. to work. All right. Yeah. All right. And how long have you been on this current team that you're in? I mean, oh, first no. of all, you, we came on, we assumed everybody knew everything about you. A brief, how did you get into security? You know, yeah. how'd you end up here? Okay, so I've been doing security now for about 10 years. So before that, I um, was, I was like an infrastructure consultant. So I used to, um, I used to basically build networks and routers and switches and Cisco IP phones. Um, I did a lot of deploying like all around Europe. Um, and so, and I did like traditional infrastructure upgrades. This was just before cloud. Um, so I used to go and rack things and, and configure things with console cables and stuff. Then um, I moved countries to New Zealand uh, and I got a job and they said, oh yeah, that's what you're going to do over here. And I was like, great. And then when I got there, they were like, oh, we don't do that, um, but you're technical, right? Can you go help security? So that's how I ended up in security, like completely by accident. But turns out when I got there, I enjoyed it. It was interesting. And I realized like in terms of career progression, there was way more to do. So uh, that's how I ended up in security. This was before it was cool. So I remember being like, I don't know about security. Um, uh, so yeah. Um, bunch of nerds. Yeah, and I've been in, well, I was a nerd anyway, but it's security, <laughs> this was before security was trendy, which of course it is now, so, um, but I, I, I stayed. So. Trendy among nerds, maybe, but. Yeah, trendy <laughs> nerds, do. trendy nerds. Henrik, so, you have a Tara, question? you mentioned the villages in DEF CON. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite village, actually? Is it the cloud one? I'm going to have to say cloud because that's, that's, that they're my cloud village, but there are lots of very cool villages at DEF CON and you can't get around all of them because it's too big. So the one that I want to go to that I still haven't been to is the social engineering village mm -hmm. because they have like live social engineering challenges during the village that well, during the four days it it ran, it runs, and they actually like call and try and social engineer people. It's really cool, but they don't record it, of course. Um, so you have to be there to watch it. Um, the And I've never managed to because I can't be in two places at the same time, which is very upsetting for me. Um, also, yeah. um, there's um, the, the ones that I think are cool. There's the hardware hacking village. You have car hacking village there's the <laughs> aerospace village there are so many um the village i really wanted to go to this year and i know rod would have been i know that's where i would have found rod had he been there there was an ai village as well um which is i think it has been around but it got a lot bigger this year because they do change a bit depending yeah. on what's topical uh whether they're bigger smaller etc um and the application security village i should give them a shout out and um, they're usually next door to cloud village they've got really big this year one of our teammates is heavily involved there um but there's so many of them and they're really cool and the one thing that i don't like about defcon is that um 
they all run concurrently, of course, because they're all part of DEFCON, and you can't be in multiple villages at the same time, which is a shame, sadly. That would be because, I mean, that is a long period of time. It's almost like you need, well, see, that's the other thing about conferences. <clears throat> when I used to go just to go, right, to actual conferences without speaking or managing them, you'd have to go with the team so you would catch everything you needed for your organization. And at the same time, you miss out on, you may get a team member that's just horrible at taking notes. Like, oh, my goodness, what did you do? Right? So it's, yeah. Good point. Good point. Sarah, what's the craziest thing you've seen at one of these conferences? Oh, well. Or top three. Top three. Oh, God, there's so many stories. But I figured. I mean, my personal favorite, this wasn't at Hacker Summer Camp. Um, it was at another conference. Probably the craziest slash stupidest thing I've seen is, a, is a, an individual who um, clearly was nervous before their talk. They apparently necked half a bottle of spirits backstage just before they went on like uh, and so <laughs> half of my um, floor. Anyway. during the, the the hour of their talk they got progressively more drunk as they absorbed the alcohol and it was extremely it, to start with it was funny but then it kind of degenerated into just cringe um, and um, this person had to be taken off the stage because they were far too drunk to finish their talk um, um, that is not a good idea pro tip if you're going to talk don't neck that much alcohol have a shot but no more uh, so this I mean guy. I've seen that yeah don't 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 do that it's it's not a good like i said to start with at the beginning when they were only a little bit tipsy it was funny but then it kind of went into like quite i do i do my best thinking when i'm drinking yeah <laughs> um and um i mean that's always the one that sticks out in my mind um like i said i won't call out the conference or the person um uh, of course not of course not but you ever see yeah, someone yeah, like gonna... uh like uh, do some a crazy demonstration, like a live act oh, you know, that was, oh. that was insane or what? Um, oh, there's oh, so many of them. Like, um, I've, I've, oh God, you make me pick one. I've seen um, people do uh, make like, and this actually same conference. Um, I've seen people do uh, 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 make like a radio frequency gun and have it trigger things and they did a live demo on stage that was pretty cool <laughs> i've seen um uh, an amazing lady actually did came in uh with flames and dancers um for like two minutes at the beginning of her keynote uh which is a very non-security thing to do which i thought was awesome honestly um yep. there's so many things and and one of one of my favorite things to to in conference talks uh, i'm very biased towards this is your um real life stories so um i've heard some amazing stories um there's one lady who uh you can actually um you can actually see this talk online. I'm sure it's online. Uh, a lady who um, is a social engineering person. So she does like physical pen testing. And so basically she tries to see if she can get into businesses and, and you know, get as far as their comms room, blah, blah, blah. And she's paid to do it. And um, she is a lady. Um, and what she, one of some of the things she does, she wears like a fake baby bump because people, <laughs> um, because people want to open doors for pregnant ladies um, and be helpful. Um, and like just some of her stories are incredible. And she sat down next to people with like a card scanner in her bag. Uh, and so she'll like take an imprint of their access card while she sat next to them, while she's showing them something on TikTok or Instagram or whatever. Um, um, and whilst the thing is just reading their card, their access card, it's, um, it's honestly, I love real life stories, particularly physical penetration right. testing, mm. because I think it's something that we're actually all really bad at. So that you hear the cringe and you're like, oh, oh, yes. Yeah, um, I, so I've seen so many things. When I, I fancy myself wanting to be a hacker early in my career, social engineering was a thing, right? Because you could manipulate emotions. The two best outfits, FedEx, UPS. You're going <laughs> you're gonna get in, right? And, and have a box. And inside the box, I'm have an access point. Look into the wall. Get the DACP because there's no VLANs. <laughs> and then now you're on my network. So, I thought it was always a clipboard and a high vis vest or the pizza person, you know. But yeah, that's that's good. I like that delivery person. Yeah, that's good. 
That's you can good. and you can buy a FedEx and UPS uniform online. I'm sure. Might I suggest you wear that next uh, next keynote you give? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Challenge yeah. accepted. Yeah. yeah. Challenge yeah. accepted. I would do that. What? Well, and I'm freaking out. Total distraction to our listeners and of our viewers. I'm like, why is Raw wearing a shoulder holster with a 45 oh. on? But yeah. it's his shirt. Look at that. It is. You know, Sarah said I'm all into AI. This is one of the official uh, must-learn AI security shirts, by the way. So that's an that's an Android. And then down at the bottom. Oh, it's actually cool. Look I at you in. not being a dead, the old man with the bland shirt on. But, uh, yeah, I'm trying to outlive my purposes. Yeah. So, so you pulled the thread. Sarah, tell us what you think about this AI revolution going on right now. It seemed like you were really keen to talk about it earlier. Ah, oh. <laughs> um, look, I don't want to like this is Rod's thing. Well, it's Rod and I's thing. So um, yes. I am very sort of cautiously optimistic about AI because with any new tool, you can do good things with it. You can do bad things with it. Um, and it, so, of course, we should be using AI because attackers, threat actors, they will be using it to make things easier for them. So we need to use it as well. But the thing that I find really fascinating is, um, obviously, it's a new thing. Everyone's building AI stuff, right? Because oh, if I, if, I, if I went a day without hearing the phrase AI, it would be amazing. Mm -hmm. But what I think is really I know, I know. Um, what I think is really interesting is how we're going to secure building on top of AI because people are going to use, most people are not going to run an AI platform, right? They're going to use Microsoft or somebody else's platform because you need a, like a heck of a lot of compute. Um, but are people building in a secure way onto that to secure the AI? Um, and um, I, probably not. We're definitely going to see it as it is another vector because you build on anything. It there are vectors, so there there are new like attack vectors. So I think for me, the thing that's interesting and the thing that um, we need to work on is not just how we're going to use AI to help security, but are people whilst you're building all this stuff. Um, if you're building stuff on on an AI platform, are you building it in a secure way? Um, and pro tip, there is not, um, as, as, well, at the time we're recording this, there is not, because when I started researching this, um, there is not some kind of magical new tool that will magically secure anything you do in AI. We don't have anything like that yet. Um, and anyone who tells you differently, no. Um, you know, we are still falling back on essentially building something that's like an AI enabled application um, is we're falling back on that secure development principles, which is, you know, where does your um, where does your supply chain stuff come from? Um, are you doing, you know, the basics that we've talked about for years? Are you doing all of that stuff correctly? That's still where we're going to go to because we're um, it, there's not some magical tool or anything to secure AI um, that doesn't exist, at least yet. So it, all of the secure development practices, secure coding, how you integrate your application into an AI platform, I think that will be the number one attack vector. Um, that is my personal opinion, because as well, remember that threat actors don't, and look, you folks know this, threat actors aren't going to like go and do something really complicated when if you haven't done some basic stuff and you're using dodgy libraries and blah, 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 they're just going to manipulate that first because why would they do something crazy complicated? It's not worth their time. So I think one of the things I want to go bang the drum about, which um, I've started to do and we will do more, is that um, we need to be doing this secure coding, secure development stuff. That is how we will keep AI as secure as we can. Um, and I don't think we're talking about that enough yet, but we will. I, 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 agrees. I agree. Yeah, yeah Henry agrees. I agree. Yeah. And really, this is this has not changed the security story in any way. It's just like Sarah said, it's just another tool. Um, we just need to go back to the source. The source is always what? The developers. <laughs> the developer story. It's oh, always no. the developer. <laughs> no, no, Rod. I didn't. No, it is not the only thing. It I'm pointing is... fingers. No, I'm just kidding. You are, point... you are pointing fingers. No. Rod. So, 
here's the thing though so i am of the opinion con controversial maybe that we in security have at least partially done this to ourselves okay and then yeah. we, and but with ai we have a, a chance to change that narrative because it's newish i mean i know like what we're going to tell them to do is not new but um security is notoriously poor at talking to the rest of the business, devs and everybody else. We've been historically really bad at it. And we've been like wagging fingers, pointing fingers, thou shalt not do blah, just because security. And we haven't told it in an easy way. We haven't told, we haven't told what we, we haven't explained to the business what we want to do in an easy way. We haven't explained it in a way that is simple for people to do. And that's why they've gone around us and ignored us. And now a lot of devs and other parts of IT have, they have a bad experience with security because we have um they because we have burnt them in the past and now they don't want to have a dialogue with us which is even worse because then we're not even talking to them so i think with ai um we do have a small window to kind of reset the narrative um and we should be doing this with everything else as well but because this is new we can say hey come and talk to us um, you know, this is what you need to be doing. It's nothing new. We want to be doing these secure development stuff um, because this is where before people build stuff that's been in for five years that we then subsequently can't change very easily, we can have that dialogue when we're in this crazy building all the things phase and be like, hey, can you think about doing this securely? This is how nothing new, you'll know it already because every dev I have ever spoken to, if you explain security to them in a simple way, can understand. Um, it is not, we have been gatekeepy. Security have gatekeeped. We have been gatekept. This is maybe the word. We have gatekept security knowledge. Not everybody, but a lot of people have been like, hmm, wow, well, security. Oh, it's very, very complicated. Oh, no, you couldn't <laughs> understand this. Um, oh, oh, I'm a security person. Like, you couldn't understand this. Um, this is security business. And because of that, when in fact, so much of security is common sense, not, not all of it. You know, there's niche stuff, which, um, you know, requires a specific skill set. But to understand security principles is so much common sense. You have no idea. And we have been appalling at explaining that. So we have done this to ourselves, to a point. Can I make a comment? No. Ran no. over, ran over. <laughs> About developers and security. Andrew no. and I had the unique opportunity and luxury of leading developers. So we had a contest. <laughs> I told Andrew, you get them to meet a deadline, I'll teach this cat to fetch. I had a pile of sticks before they met a deadline. Right. <laughs> it, 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 it's crazy. And so with all this sprint motions, waterfall, agile, scrum, you can say security development lifecycle all you want. I, I'm not an expert at any of those things, but if those are not modules in those sprints that they are being checked against, it seems very subjective. You make a suggestion to the developer to include that in there. It has to be some enforcement. And I think the enforcement is the development, you know, frameworks that they are using. And if the, if there are any, you know, agile, scrum, sprint, and waterfall, whatever that is, uh, experts listen to us, tell me I'm wrong. But there still seems to be a lack of enforcement to make software secure. It seems to be, I'm going to make yeah. a suggestion. It's after the effect. Exactly. I think half the time that before I came to Microsoft, you know, I was at the financial services company and, you know, they want us, right. We didn't, we didn't do, we were going to go live with a whole new system for the bank, but they didn't want to do QA first, right. They wanted to save money, save time to get this thing deployed. It's the same thing, right. If you want to have safe security in your code, it's going to take longer. So it's all of those things that right. Longer means more money, all of those kinds of things. Well, I, and I think I think we're getting better, but I think historically, down through time, IT, whether it's security or infrastructure, or in, whatever it happens to be, it's always been reactive, right? It's let's 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 roll this thing out, and then we'll figure it out later on because people need it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a, that's a. If AI can make any real impact other than being a new shiny, look at code, a verse known attack vulnerabilities and the way C works and, and the way Rails works and the way, you know, Sharp works and, and, and all the, the, the modern languages that are coming out. 
AI to go look at that and say, the way you've written this was a prior vulnerability and a bug in a, yeah. That, that's, Void Hill, yes. Not no, it's no but can we do it this way, 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Weird, trying to just work with people instead of just putting up barriers, weird. Yeah. super weird right henrik henrik's got all the facial expressions but then i have to share my knowledge and and you know i lose my role nah. no no i'm we just don't... kidding i'm i'm play no, acting, I, rod, you, I hope you're joking there rod i am i'm play acting. Rod never jokes. Cause, cause here's the thing right if you're a security person who is worried that um by sharing some knowledge uh, um and, and if you're a security person and i have come across them um in real life if you're concerned that by having a dialogue with the rest of the business and other parts of it that it's going to make you irrelevant then you need to take a long hard look at yourself um and if you're um, and that to me says your skills are not up to par if you're concerned that by sharing some basic security information that's going to make you irrelevant um that's your problem 100 percent I Bam. like I like the savagery. Sure. Uh, I'm not. I'm from. I'm from. Well, I'm actually from the UK, but um, I've lived in Australia and New Zealand. I don't. I don't like mince my words. Like well, this is probably can, why. This is probably why I didn't do very well. In, well probably you, why I didn't do so well in America because I don't mince my words. Well, um, you, you, um, you have to be a savage. Everything. Every animal in Australia can kill you. It'll bite you and you'll die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of them can. Um, Especially the drop bears. Yeah, especially the drop bears. Yeah. yeah. They can't. <laughs> I hate those things. I mean, yeah. yeah, that's it. You know, Henrik, Sarah. What do you got, Henrik? Come on, you got to have another question. You got facial expressions. You got, well, like, what do you think, Henrik? I got, you got comments? I got tons of questions, actually. But yeah, throw them out there. Uh, is it, uh, tr I, have, I have never been uh, to DEF CON, actually. Is it true that uh, you never, you should never bring your primary phone or laptop because it will automatically get old? Um, I mean, I, so for me, I would personally avoid, I mean, I sure as hell wouldn't connect to the Wi-Fi, um, <laughs> but um, I mean, me, I tend to, I would keep as many electronic devices as I could away from DEF CON and Black Hat. Um, I definitely wouldn't connect to the Wi-Fi. Actually, I think I did. I did in Black Hat, but anyway, um, in, in fairness though, Black Hat and DEF CON actually have special, they actually have Wi-Fi, um, they have their own Wi-Fi set up and they have a sock that runs it and it's a sock full of hackers. So actually probably the Wi-Fi is actually all right, um, to be honest with you. Um, but um, yeah, a lot of people say, oh, oh, should I take a device? To me, um, the principle I've always gone with is take as few devices as possible. So I will usually only take my phone unless I'm like presenting and need the laptop. Um, uh, some people use burner devices. I personally yes. don't go that far as to do a burner. Um, I will just take my phone. It's got to be fully patched. Um, I turn off the Bluetooth, turn off the Wi-Fi, um, and then I think you're probably all right. But um, different people have different opinions on this. So, um, you know, some people go full on, I'm taking a burner phone. Um, yeah. I'm not that that person, but you people never know. Did you, did you how, see long ago was, how long ago was DEF CON? That was in August, right? Yeah, August? yeah. So yeah, there's somebody, still time. Someone could, be, someone could be living off the land on my phone for sure. Somebody <laughs> I'm, I'm really, and dropped the bomb in MGM. Yeah, well, Sarah. Yeah. Sarah. well, whoever's living off the land in my phone, I mean, you're going to be very disappointed. It's just a lot of dog pictures and selfies. selfies. So. Yeah. So, so was it just like rumor, but tell me, and, and probably you didn't notice it. Were there a lot of like Chromebooks that had very basic use cases, right? Basically taken away. Cause this seems like the only thing you could take to DEF CON and be safe. <laughs> Use that, right? Is that solar powered? You know yeah. what? That's funny. Although, Yes, it's a conference full of hackers. Um, all the hackers, hackers tend to know how to protect their stuff as well. So, mm -hmm. you know, th like there are people with plenty of devices around. I, I mean, so it's it's not as, and maybe I'm being naive, but you know, it's not as bad as all that, but definitely there's a couple of like sensible basic precautions you can take when you go. Like not uh, go? Do that you're good yeah, don't yeah, take yeah, go. a really old jailbroken iphone <laughs> so one last question because i've been dominating the questions here but i think we, we yeah, got cool. to the end and I, yeah <laughs> but we need to ask this super important question i think we're talking with an assumption here because 
you were on this podcast. Thank you for coming on. Podcast. You were at DEF CON. You were at, you know, Black Hat and everything. But you're not the norm. How many women were there? Oh, good question. So, Ooh. in fact, it, it depends. Um, that varies from conference to conference. So, the conferences like Diana Initiative um, and the, and SquadCon, um, like, they are very, very focused on inclusivity. Um, the uh, Black Hat DEF CON, um, B-Size Las Vegas, um, B-Size Las Vegas is pretty diverse. Black Hat DEF CON, definitely more guys of course um uh having said that i the change i've seen over the years is pretty good most of these conferences really do try and attract um and you know by giving out discounted passes um and and other initiatives they do they are really trying quite hard to to sort of bring up that uh balance of diversity and of course diversity is not just gender diversity can be other things as well um you know race uh, etc um uh, it's not perfect by any sense. And, you know, the, re the reality is, is, of course, there are far more men in this industry than women. So to bring it up to like a 50-50 is probably unrealistic. But I do think that compared with, I mean, even if I compare with when I started going to conferences five, 10 years ago, um, you know, there's definitely been a trend in them getting better. Um, although it's not perfect. Um, I know that um, it, it's a sad reality that, you um, uh, you know, a lot of ladies will be put off by the fact that they just see like a like a load of um, people who just look like hackers. Um, and if that you find that intimidating, that might put you off going, which is a shame because usually they're lovely. Um, but um, so it's sort of a personality thing as well. But we're getting there slowly but surely. But it's certainly, yeah, certainly me being a lady. Um, it, 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 you don't, I'm not, I'm never the only lady in the room or anything, which is what I used to be. But I, I, I'm we, we're all on the call having a befuddled look to our what, what is playing in the background, Rod? What so are you Rod. doing? I thought what we video were are you almost watching, finished. Rod? You know, we're not almost finished. Not, I got one more. Can I have one more? Sarah, yeah, yeah. thank you. We really appreciate that. Um, and it's, it's I have a important. question. Also. Oh, on, okay, Harry, you go, then I'll go. Right, keep going. Let's do let's do the I've last been dying one. to ask this one is uh, is Sentinel still your baby? Sentinel is still my baby. Sentinel is always going to be my baby. Like, like everyone knows that Sentinel is my baby. Even though I'm not in the Sentinel CXC team anymore, it's my baby. I'm very fond of Sentinel. Henrik, that was perfect. You got actually yeah, great questions. We got to get Henrik on. Sentinel more. is finally potty trained, so now she likes, she loves it. Sentinel is my toddler. Yeah, Sentinel is my toddler now. Uh, it's your toddler. There you go. Uh, in in the second part of that question about representation of, of women how did you feel did you oh, feel I don't, care. Welcome? I don't care anymore but that's easy for me to say when I have been to many many conferences um also I'm incredibly fortunate that um I had uh, a lot of support um I have um essentially um I went to a girls school um when I uh, grew up um, and it was an incredibly supportive environment where they were just like, what extremely powerful career are you going to have? Um, it wasn't a, um, and, and they were very sort of pro women and you can do whatever the heck you want. And I had that drilled into me both by my school and my family from a very young age. So I have never ever, and I realized, you know, I am in the minority that not all um, women get the privilege of being brought up in this way. Um, that I am incredibly lucky that um, I have never considered myself to be anything less than the equal of a man, if not their superior. Um, and um, therefore, um, I'm very lucky that I have never felt, um, and it's probably a bit of a personality thing too, I've never felt intimidated by being the only woman in the room. Um, I, I don't really care. Um, um, whereas I know that for many women, that is, you know, they feel they don't feel comfortable. Um, and that can be a number of reasons why they don't feel comfortable. So for me, I don't care. Um, I really couldn't give a crap um, if, if I'm the only woman there. Um, and it is my community. It is my tribe now. I've been there for so long that I, I don't even think about it anymore. It's not even honestly, I don't think about it. Um, um at all anymore i certainly did earlier on but now i don't um and 
like I said, but that's from years of exposure to it and having um, a very positive upbringing about my ability, um, which not everybody has, which is why we need to have these initiatives to encourage people and give them safe spaces to come and start going to conferences um, that they otherwise might have felt too intimidated to go to. And then they will end up eventually, of course, hopefully being like me, where you just don't even think about it anymore. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. As we get ready to close the show, what Sarah was really trying to say is, I'm here because, not because I bought a ticket. I'm here because I'm a badass. Yeah, exactly. I heard are that they, too. I heard yeah. that too. Are there, are there any questions? That's what I yeah. thought. Yeah. That's right. Brody, Brody has one question. I got one final question. One final question. Can we get a, can we get a selfie? Can we get a group selfie here? All right. Oh, yeah, Everybody? sure. Yeah. Everybody? All right. All right. Mm. A... All right. Perfect. Thank you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ms. Young. Sarah, Thanks for coming on, me. and you know, it's you know, coming on our show from the future is impressive. You've not been the I first know. futuristic person to it come is on. Indeed, when it, no, it's a Wednesday, it's Thursday morning. Yeah, yeah, we, we can't even show this till tomorrow. So, <laughs> yeah. thanks to all our listeners and supporters. Um, we really appreciate you taking time out your schedule to listen and or watch us. Stay tuned for more exciting guests that are coming on to the Microsoft Security Pod Show. I don't know what we're called these days. Um, Experience. Any questions you may have, flood Discord and and tag Brody. He'll get you an answer in less than an hour. That's his. Is SLA. that new Brody or old Brody? New Brody. Well, okay. Probably the new Brody. The old Brody's like, Ugh, you know. can't trust that guy. Yeah. yeah. He he hallucinates. Yeah. <laughs> Until next week. Thank Live you long all. and prosper. Bye. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks. Sarah. <laughs>